Hi, I'm Trisha, Research Manager at Immerse. I'm Christina, Curriculum and Assessment Manager at Immerse. Welcome to Connecting the Dots, Converse on the Verse. This show is all about diving into the pedagogy and efficacy behind Immerse, the first virtual reality language learning platform designed specifically for live language teaching and learning. In this episode, Trisha unpacks what the research says about VR's impact on vocabulary learning. Well, hello and welcome back to Connecting the Dots, Converse on the Verse. I've been looking forward to this episode for quite some time now. Um, What does the research say about VR's impact on vocabulary learning? So I'm going to be, you know, putting uh, Tricia under the gun here and to get all the dirty details on the research that's out there. And what do we know about VR and how that affects vocabulary learning. So let's just go right off the bat, Tricia. What evidence do we have out there and what does it tell us? Oh, I love that you're getting straight to the point, Christine. (laughs) (laughs) Putting me under a microscope. Let let me start by saying, why do people think VR is going to be beneficial for vocabulary learning? And I'm not going to get into a ton of theory because this is supposed to be kind of a, a light, quick podcast, but just to give everyone an understanding There's, you know, this idea in the field that because when you're in virtual reality, you learn new words in context, right? And you have visuals that accompany those words. So for example, if I'm learning the word for straw, I'm looking at my drink right here. If I'm looking, if I'm learning the word for straw and I'm in a kitchen environment, putting that straw into my virtual, you know, glass, because it's very contextualized, we have a lot of embodied learning There's been a lot of researchers, especially in the field of computer-assisted language learning, who have argued that that will be beneficial for vocabulary learning and retention. Um, So in terms of the evidence we have, let's get into that. I'll say, you know, in, in the research on high immersion VR and language learning, the most common kind of topic that's been looked at is effective factors, student perceptions. However, After that, when it comes to looking at learning gains and kind of like, you know, grammatical gains, proficiency gains, um, vocabulary has been the most studied topic. And that's for a lot of reasons that we can get into later. But in terms of the evidence we have, there's, there's several studies that have been done. And most of them show, you know, all of them show a little something different, but most of them show that students learning in VR compared to traditional methods do learn vocabulary more and they retain Mm -hmm. these new words longer. And this is particularly true if they can pick up the object and interact with it. That's kind of like the general consensus we have. So to give you an example of a a really recent study that actually came out that we wrote about in in our Immerse blog, it came out in the Journal of Computer Assisted Language Learning, which is one of our big kind of call research journals. Um, It was conducted by Chen and Yuan. They did a study looking at 30 learners learning either in VR or in a traditional like classroom, um, kind of like, you know, flashcard based Mm -hmm. method. And they had those learners, I I believe they learned like 30 new Mandarin vocabulary words. And they found that those who learned in VR learned about 35% more initially and like the first post test they did. And they also retained about 32% more than their traditional counterparts. Yeah, that's significant. I mean, when you're yeah. thinking about, you know, a classroom experience, that's that's significant number of, of vocabulary words. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it was. It, and it was a statistically significant difference. Um, so that's that's kind of like the general consensus. Now, of course, if you get into certain studies and there's still a lot of gaps, which we'll we can talk about in a minute. But yeah. That's kind well, of tell me about those gaps, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, so I still not know where where are the gaps then? And yeah, you... well, ahead, let, yeah. let me start by saying one of the big challenges with conducting VR research in general that leads to some of these gaps is just the cost of VR devices, mm-hmm. and because they're so expensive still. Um, Yes, they're much cheaper than they used to be, but for a lot of researchers, they're still quite um, expensive. You're not able 
to often have a really big study with a large sample size. And so most of the studies that actually have been done on vocabulary learning include 30 participants. And a lot of times they're control experimental studies where they have one group in VR and one in a classroom. And so that number is divided by two. You have 15 mm -hmm. in each group. So that's a huge gap just in terms of, well, it's, it's hard to make these really big claims when we're conducting such small scale studies. That doesn't mean they're not valuable and they're not well done, but you know, it's, we need a, a larger sample size for one. Another huge gap, um, which we're trying to actually fill with kind of our Metagram project, is most of the studies that have been done have looked at VR versus traditional classroom learning, right? Mm -hmm. So like a completely different method, not necessarily following a communicative approach, so I make the argument, well, how do we know then that the effect is VR and not just a different pedagogical approach, right? right? How do we not know that if we were to apply the same lesson, teach it in the same way, as close as possible in a classroom, that we wouldn't see the same learning gains? Um, however, there have been a few studies, like very, very few, who have actually looked at identical like VR and computer, like desktop computer experiences. Uh, which is really exciting because then you're actually looking at, okay, what is the impact of this like immersive device? And there was one that recently came out in 2023 by Lion Chin. And I can, you know, link all these in our show notes if anyone wants That'd to go great. to the actual yeah. studies. But they looked at VR learning, I believe, again, it was 30 learners um, learning either in a game that they played in VR or a game that they played, like the exact same game that they played on a PC computer. And what they found, which I think is more telling for us, because they are actually comparing two identical experiences, right, apples to apples. is, yeah, exactly, is that both groups learned right? Both groups made gains, but the VR group remembered the words better. So they had significantly better long-term retention, um, which is really promising and, and exciting. No, absolutely. Absolutely. So if I'm a, if I'm a classroom practitioner uh, and I'm teaching, you know, language face-to-face, -face, how, what does this mean for me? What, how can mm -hmm. I take this this really valuable research and apply it to my own classroom? Yeah, that's a great question. So let me go down to like, say you have no VR equipment, you don't want to use computers, you don't want to do any of that. You just want to teach in, in your regular classroom. The best thing I would say that you could do based on the evidence we have is bring in as many objects as you can. And we see teachers do that, right. right? I remember when I learned French, my teacher would bring in a bag with random objects and pull it out. Um, <laughs> any Anytime, there's actually a, a lot of research in psychology and I'm blanking on the name of the theory, but again, we can link it in the show notes. And it shows, or they argue that when your brain is presented with like the you know word as well as a visual or a gesture or a sound, anything that, corresponds to that word in a logical way, that you're more likely to learn it and retain it because you're creating more neural pathways. So I would say if like a classroom teacher who doesn't have access to tech, but they still want to kind of apply this idea, any, any objects you can bring in, any visuals you can bring in, any interacting with these objects would all be really beneficial for your students. Awesome. Awesome. And, you know, we have our language program, uh, referral program now too, which I think mm -hmm. is, a, this is, you know, it's a great way to supplement what's happening in the classroom to build that vocabulary, exactly. you know, so if you're talking about, you know, a headset or whatever, and then they're actually in an environment and they get to be in that headset, or they're talking about ordering a cup of coffee and they actually get to practice in the environment where they're picking up a coffee cup of coffee. We exactly. Know, yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a practitioner, so I just see so much practical application of right. this. And, and just like you said, you know, you know, old school, we'd bring in bags of groceries and say mm -hmm. a cup of, a box of, right? And Right. But that's and, obviously really challenging. I mean, it, it requires a lot of prep on, on the teacher side. One thing I'll say too, that, that I think is so exciting is, you know, we've been looking at in this big Metagrant project we're doing the idea of comparing vocabulary on desktop immersed versus VR immersed, kind of oh. trying to have a study that's really comparing to apples to apples. And what we're finding is similar to the other studies in that both groups are actually learning quite a lot. 
the VR group might retain a little more because it is really memorable when you're in this right. immersive experience. But that doesn't mean that the desktop version is not extremely beneficial as well. So I say that just, you know, if, if anyone's interested in the referral program and they don't have headsets, that doesn't mean that it's not beneficial in terms of learning. It's, you know, it's it's two different environments, but anytime you can accompany a visual and kind of interacting with an object when learning a new word, it's it's really helpful. Yeah, excellent point. Great point. Yeah, there are so many takeaways there. And I know that you've written quite a few blogs related to this, mm -hmm. um, but have really, you know, broken it down that practitioners like myself can really understand and and walk away with some key, key learnings there. So I so appreciate that, uh, Tricia. Yeah. So thank you so much. And for those of you who are interested, Tricia will post those articles and yes. we also, you know, have some great resources on our website as well mm -hmm. as our blog. So thank you again. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.